We got the stain masters. We're gonna get these posts stained up so that when we install this railing, next time we're out here, we don't have to cut around where the rails attach to the house. What do you think about that, brah? Sounds like a plan to me, brah. <laughs> It's another day and we're on the mountain working again and uh, the insulation's done, look at that. So that means we need to get the roof completely watertight. Today. Right? Today. Today. Hey, Before why, the ice rainstorm. Why are you reading so hard? <laughs> I've been carrying this stuff off the stairs. So today's video is brought to you by Grace Ice and Water Shield. We're going to cover the whole roof in Ice and Water Shield actually. Uh, normally you would just do the valleys and the eaves and yes. that would prevent leakage uh, due to like ice dams. If yeah. ice backed up water and it went under your shingles, the ice and water shield would protect it. But even better than that. Yep, those are the most prone areas yep. to have leaks is correct near the near the eave and the gutter line and in a valley. Yes. So that's good to start with. Even better than that, do the whole roof and then put the metal on the roof because this stuff seals around fasteners like all the screws. It'll actually seal around them. Uh, it it self adhesive to the roof and the joints where they lap adhere, so it's basically mm -hmm. watertight under your watertight roof just in case. So that's what we're gonna do after I carry <laughs> about ten more of these up here. Yeah, once you take care of that, yeah. I'm uh, still working on this <laughs> right. right here. <laughs> hey, buddy. Oh, <laughs> hey, you're doing a great job. What are you doing right now? I was just going to let you something? know that, no, I was just going to let you know there's probably five or ten more of those you need to get. All right. So, I got it. if you could just go ahead and do I that. I should have layer here. Oh, hey, let me mention this. This is HT high temperature stuff because because uh, it's going under metal. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, that's a special, it's for high temperature uh, for metal. High temperature it's like special. you right now. Yeah. All right. I'm going to see if I can find a little graphic here, but if you don't know what an ice dam is, basically it's caused from water melting over the heated space of your house on the roof and then refreezing on the overhangs where there's no heat underneath and then building up and then the water running down the roof to that area would be like ponding up and backing up on your roof and that would leak. So hopefully I had a good graphic to show you how that really works. <laughs> I hope so too. Let's go ahead and talk about staining more. I know staining is just staining, but we're very meticulous. Like we'll do one face, Try not to lap onto another face because if you did, some of the stain would soak in here. Sorry, my finger's bleeding. And then when you coated this face again, it would look double dark. Don't want that. So we do one face at a time and, and keeping a wet edge. That means basically we don't stop or walk away until it's done all the way down and then we swap to the next face. And that's a good way to make it kind of look good in the finish. Hey, we're going full team on the roof in just a minute, guys. Full team. So. Five minutes, we're going. Here's something pretty interesting. This is in our dryer box. It's actually code now, and the inspector told me. The limit is 35 feet, but it's the code. They write it in the box how long this pipe is. Uh, this is 15, and each 90 degree corner counts as five feet for a total of 12, or excuse me, a total of 20. So that passes code. It goes whoop, then that way. That something that else out? here, this is actually a four inch diameter pipe. It, it's in a wall, it's only three and a half inches because this box, is designed to sort of ovalize this pipe and, and make it work in a regular wall, which is nice too. We're gonna get going here. We're actually gonna take like 10 foot sections of this and that's actually in the instructions. Uh, roll it loosely and that way you don't have to try to handle this huge roll as you roll it out. And Jamie's drawing a little diagram here. We have some valleys like wow. this that's right above us. What we're gonna do is, is do the valley first, like that centered on the valley with a piece. Nice drawing, bro. Like that. We'll cut that right there. Yep. And wow. then and then these pieces mm -hmm. will run the so we'll other way. Run it across. And lap six inches. And then we'll cut short here. Yep. Just and like that, that will seal it up. And then our next piece will actually lap that by a little bit, of course. Yep. Go up and cut in again. Good plan. All right, is it going to rain Locked today? Locked and loaded. No, it's not going to rain today. Tell Jamie that he's ready, he's ready for it. Got those high waters ready for high water, boys. I got my straps <laughs> tightened up here. My pants got short. It's <laughs> no big deal. Got it. So we're overlapping these six inches on the horizontals. 
And this stuff actually has this pretty nice, like, nodular, I call it, walking surface. Nodular. I'm a little worried about it being yeah. slippery, actually. I don't know what that means, but I like it. Are you worried, Jason? About what? <laughs> being slippery? Wait, bro, I got this one. So as a builder, this is making me really happy right now to know we're completely watertight even before the finished roof goes on. That's awesome. I watch tennis all the time and I've no, never heard of these guys. Old NBA basketball guys. Yeah, Let's talk about our insulation for a second. Uh, this is non-faced. Like there's no craft face on this. There is a craft face on this. And let's just go ahead and say this is something that's up for a huge debate uh, over time and across the country and around the world. Uh, what our inspector says here is that in most cases, uh, you would want the craft face on this for a vapor barrier further north where it's colder. Uh, and then further south, where it's warmer, you would want the craft face actually on the outside of this, on the outside of the wall. And then here, there's no craft face because we're kind of right in the middle, but that's up for debate. Uh, what's better to have uh, the vapor barrier one side or the other or not at all? So I just wanted to bring that up that, you know, I don't have all this figured out, but that's what we did here. And that passes code in this area. What do you think? Oh, man. <laughs> I hate to even say, you know, my experience in building science is is not very deep. Well, it passed code, so mm -hmm. I think we're good. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. My my level of concern about it is zero. Well, that's a good for level. this house. I'm feeling great. Love it. Mm -hmm. A little more about this insulation. I'm in the stairwell. You can see they actually had to insulate the underside of this upper part of the stairwell so that this could be non-heated and that's heated. The underside of the steps is the transition. And then they've insulated the side of the truss here. But down here is unfinished, not heated at this point. So it is not insulated down here. And that's why that is. The insulators called while they were installing and it was raining that day. They said, hey, do you really want us to insulate today? Because, you know, you got some drips in the house. I said, yes, do it. Well, the thing is, we have some holes cut in the roof to anchor our harnesses to. And those can't go away until a little bit later. So anyway, it reminds me of a story one time when a homeowner came into a house that had the roof on it, but no finished roof surface to actually completely dry it in. He had circled with a marker every drop of water that had gotten on the subfloor <laughs> through the whole house. And he was making sure to point out each one to us. And we were, we were quite, quite aware already. We already. If you're a builder and you know that just because you have the plywood on the roof and it's not actually done, don't expect it to be 100% drip free until you put your finished roofing on. My phone just go off the roof? Yeah, I was actually videoing that. Dang, I think I dropped a call. <laughs> <laughs> One technical note about applying grace ice and water shield on the whole surface of a zip roof system is that that is fine as long as you have a vented ridge. If you don't have a vented ridge, zip system recommends that you have the system engineered by somebody if you want to cover the whole surface like we're doing. We do have a vented ridge in this case though, so we're good to go. You want to see something gross? Yeah. I think this splinter that I got yesterday went in there and then it almost came out on the other. See that ir ir irritation? Right there? Yeah. So I got to go see, see that bump? <laughs> That's not it's all one sliver. I think it is. It's still in there. <laughs> uh, my buddy's a surgeon and I'm going to his house tonight. Man, I feel bad for ever calling you a sister. <laughs> Hey, we're up here on the roof. Let's talk about this pipe. We are fortunate to only have one penetration in this whole roof. <laughs> Can't say pantry. Right. Well, we've been using this boot right here that's made for shingles to temporarily keep water from draining down in here. I'm gonna remove it now because when we apply the metal roof, we don't want to use this type of boot. We may use a different style or even just use a very high quality uh, adhesive type sealant to seal around this pipe. 
put a standing seam metal roof on top of this and I mean that's gonna be like a lifetime roof basically is what I would call it so that's great the homeowner will never have to deal with roof problems uh, we're replacing the roof once this is done thanks again to grace this is awesome to have this ice and water shield on the roof keeping this place dry forever so you'll notice that we did cover the ridges on the roof with the ice and water shield those will get cut out when we do the roof for the vent in case anyone's wondering. I'm sure someone's wondering. I guarantee somebody will wonder yep, that. Yeah, absolutely. For this lower porch roof, we're gonna wait till we've got our final coat of paint on this, and then we're gonna take down this railing. Then we'll do this roof with the ice and water shield. But we're actually gonna put the metal on the upper roof first, so we're not as worried about getting this done right away. And it doesn't have insulation under it either. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know, usually we just stuff that stuff back in these boxes. Oh, we do? Yeah. Let me paint up to Jason. He's got your pro tip of the day. Work smarter, not harder. And that looks pretty smart. No ladder. Love it. And when the boss ain't around, you catch a couple Z's. <laughs> I'm around. I'm right here. Oh, crap. <laughs> We chose this brown color for the deck bands and posts because it matches the decking really well. Uh, traditionally on a farmhouse, you'd actually see white posts and railings and deck bands, but white is a lot of maintenance, number one. And number two, to make this pressure treated wood look white is difficult. You'd have to paint it two or three coats. You'd have to caulk any of the checks or cracks, all of the nail holes. It'd be a lot more labor and actually it'd be a lot more maintenance to keep it looking white. Uh, up here on the mountain, it would tend to mildew with all the fog and rain we get. So it was kind of a choice based on looks, uh, cost, and maintenance to do this brown color. Got it. Well, it's been another fantastic day on the mountain. We've got all of our post stain ready for rails. We've got ice and water shield on the whole roof, uh, ready for an ice storm tonight, actually. And uh, we're gonna go to the house. Good job, guys. I liked how we did that three guys on one post. I don't know if you guys saw yeah. that at the end. <laughs> it was super good. Yep. So uh, thanks for building with us today, and we'll see you on the next one. Could have used one more man on that last post. That's what I thought, too. Yeah.